I got some awesome new drill bits for Christmas, but I don't like the case that they're in. So let's 3D print a new one. Welcome back to Maker's Digest. A couple of years ago, I got this set of drill bits for Christmas. They're Norseman Magnum Super Premium Imperial Jobber Length Drill Bits. What I really like about this set is the case that they come in. It's hard plastic, totally self-contained, the cap screws on, and they can't fall out. The best feature, though, is that when you take the lid off, you can see all of the drill bits at a glance. And what that means is that when I'm done at a job, I look in my drill bit case at a glance, I see that if there's one missing, I know that I need to go find it. So I go find it, put it back in. A couple of years later, I still have all my drill bits. This is the first set of drill bits that I've maintained all together for that long. So this year, I got another set. This, uh, these are the Magnum Super Premium drill bits in metric. Very cool, very excited to have these. But the problem is, I don't like this case. If I wanna look and see if there's any missing bits, I kinda of have to flip through and see if there are any missing in here. These cases do have their place and uh, it, they just don't work with the way that I work. I am either here at the shop or at a job and I have two big bags of my everyday tools that are right under here. And when I'm getting ready to go, I grab some of this stuff and I throw them in the bag and I go. And what I don't want to happen is this to rattle around, open up and slide around and have my drill bit scattered all over my bag. What we're gonna do, we're gonna make one of these cases. To do that, we're gonna have to design it in 3D CAD, set it up on the 3D printer, 3D print it, clean it up and see how it goes. We're gonna have to iterate through a couple of prints. Let's get to it. In order to design this thing correctly, I needed to take some measurements of the outside of the existing case so I'd have all of the outside dimensions. Once I had those, I just fired up Fusion 360 and started going to it. I quickly realized that instead of entering in every single hole diameter by hand and then throwing in a 0.3 millimeter modifier so the drill bits would slide in, I should probably go through and set up variables for the length, the diameter of each drill bit. Once I had those set up, I could just go through and start laying out all of the drill holes. Right after that, I printed like a one millimeter section of the thing so I could just make sure that the drill bits are fitting in the right holes. And then I started laying out the inner holes and once that was done, I was able to just go for the whole thing and just, you know, tell it was done. I extruded the thing, set up the threads on it. I wasn't sure if that was gonna work just right because they're pretty huge threads and I wanted to just use the built-in thread feature on Fusion 360 and not have to try to create my own. So I was a little bit limited on what set of threads I could use. From there, I created the hex pattern on the, or I guess it's an octagon, huh? Yeah, it's an octagonal pattern on the outside and throwing some little facets around the edge just to make it nice. And then I threw fillets on a bunch of the parts because you kind of have to, it's like trademark, right? Then I built the cap and set up the threads on the inside of the cap, created the same octagonal pattern around the outside and the facets for that. Then I kind of went, got stuck in a rabbit hole of figuring out exactly how deep each one of the holes for the drill bit needs to be. And I uh, went back into my variables, set up all of the lengths for those, and then started extruding them. What I really wanted was every drill bit to have the same stick out. So that means that every hole has to be a different size. With all of those dimensions in variables, I was just able to change the formula on the extrusion feature to get the right depth. I struggled a little bit with the inner circle of drill bits on the, the very last four tiniest drill bits that just didn't work out the way that I wanted it to. And it didn't use the same formula that I was expecting. 
but I am going to post this thing on Thingiverse as well as the Fusion 360 file that I use. So if you wanted to build one of these things, all you would have to do is go through the variables and change the variables for your drill bits and it should work. But be aware, like the last four, I'm, eventually we'll fix the CAD file, but the last four drill bits, the smallest four, uh, don't have the exact formula that works. I, I just was a couple hours into it and wanted to start printing, so just went for it. Once I got all those, I decided it was time to print. I printed the case and the cap at the same time. When I first ran it through the slicer, it said that it was going to take 27 hours. So I changed some of my slicer settings uh, to like a super, super fast set of print settings that I actually got from uh, Angus over at Maker's Muse. It's using a, a 0.3 thickness on the extrusion and like jacked up a bunch of the speeds. Got it down to 11 and a half hours, which is pretty amazing from like 26 or 27, whatever it said, down to 11 hours. So let's take a look at that and we'll see the print here in a few. The print is done, let's have a look. There it is. Let's see. Turned out pretty good, finished. There's one little booger right there. But for the most part, I think we did good. Give you a closer look here. Probably need to file down the top there a little bit. So the cap. The finish is pretty good. You can really tell the definition on here from the fast print settings that I used. It's a little warpy, but that's fine. The uh, threads on this were tricky because of the definition on the fast print settings. Um, I actually had to print a new cap because when the threads were exactly the right size to match up to each other, they it wouldn't screw on. So what I did was I reprinted the cap and I changed it, the scale by 1%. And that allowed for this to screw on just fine. It's got a little bit of a gap here. I'm gonna to try to find a rubber gasket to put it in there so it'll seal it up a little bit better. Let's clean it up and then we, the next step will be to check and see if the drill bits fit. And if they don't, it's pretty easy. We just chuck the drill bit in a drill and fix it. All right, let's clean it up. Not bad. Let's start putting the drill bits in. All right. It's a big one fits. Fits. Ah, this one's a little bit tight. There might be a bugger down in the hole that uh, preventing that from sliding in smoothly. So how do we make a hole exactly the same size as a drill bit? Z. 
this. This is going to be the first time I've used one of these drill bits. Awesome. Make some room in there. And we don't want to bottom out because there's just a thin hole or a thin layer in there. Let's see that fix it. Fixed it. Right on. Four more. These were the tough ones. Yeah, that's too tight. Apparently the tolerances get less and less at the smaller diameter hole you're printing, especially with these print settings. but not least one millimeter drill bit one millimeter drill bit love it I can't even chuck that thing <laughs> you know what we could do yeah We'll just drill it out at a, a mill and a half. Because that'll work. Uh, that I didn't want to happen. Too fast cutting. Ah, bummer. See, this is what happens when you drill too fast into PLA. Don't do that. I did that to show you what would happen. Not really. Not a big deal because we know exactly what temperature this melts at, so I'll clean that up. Later. And it didn't work. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Fix that later. Let's see. That's it. Oh, wait. What are we missing? That. All right, well, that's it. We've got it. We're done. I will uh, share this on Thingiverse if anybody's interested in printing one for your own use. Thanks for watching. Till next time, keep making.